We got a uh, <clears throat> got a lot of Issachar rice out here, man. Anyways, man, um, our praises to Abinawa, our Father which is in heaven. Hallowed be His name. His kingdom is definitely coming, and His will is being done on earth as it is in the heavens. And to His only begotten Son, Yahweh Mashiach. Some people just say Jesus Christ, Yahweh Mashiach, Yeshua. Um, I'm I reiterate this because. Seeing him as he is is more important than than knowing the name. You got those that know the name, but they don't see him as he is. You got those that worship a certain image that they think he is. You got those that worship a certain image that they think he is. Who the fuck are these images? Who the fuck are these guys? With all these images being passed around in the Hebrew community and amongst these various different camps and these different sections of Israel, who the fuck are these images, man? Because the Lord, he told us not to make any graven images when it comes to him, the father, the, the father of spirits, the I am that I am. There's a reason why he says he told Moses, to tell the people I am sent you because his name is hollowed you wouldn't call your father any type of name like you're calling a friend or you're calling um, a, a, a brother man you wouldn't call your father by his name you would call him father and when it comes to even the son now some people they may say Yeshua some people they may say Yahweh Mashiach some people they may say Jesus Christos or Christ even with that being said, what really matters the most is, are you seeing him as he is? Because the commandments that he brought, the new laws of the new covenant that the Lord brought, um, that's seeing him as he is. As long as you're walking in those commandments, loving him with all your power, mind, and strength, and loving your neighbor as you love yourself, that's seeing him as he is. Because you're seeing him in spirit and in truth. Those that were pushing these false images around, you're taking away the power from the true father and the true son because the law is not done away with. So one of the things that the, the scriptures say in the law is that we're not supposed to make any graven images when it comes to um, anything that the father created, all right? We're not supposed to worship any graven images, nor are we supposed to take away the power and the majesty and the honor and the glory from the Father and the Son. This takes faith. This takes uh, believing without having to see something. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles. And elders of Great Millstone, honors as well to you, brethren. Shalom to you, few sisters. Salute to you, other brethren, fellow laborers in this truth and sincerity. Shalom to the elect. So anyway, I came across this, well, actually a comment. Um, and this guy actually sent me this video that I put in about the images. In fact, we had some debates at camp about the same topic. So we're going to go into it again since this, these uh, jakes, simple jakes, they just believe whatever they hear on the internet. They don't have the understanding. And this is also to make others aware of these claims, especially novices, which basically just means new. Anyway, this guy is called the unprofitable servant, 144, who, who's out in the brusheries, you know, teaching the best he can, I guess. I don't knock any man for going out and try to teach, but um, I don't know if that's a good place. Uh, I don't know. I don't see him actually on the highways. Now, he does teach the MOTB. He teaches the, the chariots. So he might have been a dropout from GMS. Maybe one of the brothers know. Anyway, I had an image up of Yahweh Shah. He says, 
Is that idol flying on a saucer supposed to be Yahweh Shah because he's not? These false images and idols y'all draw and come up with ain't the Lord. Okay? And we know we know it ain't exactly the Lord. That's why it's called an image. On one hand, y'all go against the image of Caesar Borgias, but create these false images. Now, black images. These are the type of guys that where were they when we had the white Jesus up, right? These type of guys, when we had the white Jesus up, or we believed Jesus was white, at least most people did. I don't think I ever believed it. But yeah, maybe when I was very young. But when these was in our churches and all those images, where was these so-called black guys going up in the churches saying, hey, that's not the right image. But as soon as we come out with this image, they all of a sudden have a problem with Yahawashah and the image of Yahawashah, not Yahawashah, so to speak. This is not Yahawashah, but it's the image, right? So what we're going to do is go through a slew of um, chapters, um, let me say Bible verses, scriptures, and cut this whole doctrine once and for all, right? This is 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of Yahweh, against the knowledge of Yahweh, and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Yahweh Shah. Now, when you go to the word imagination, it goes back to imagine or image. It says, a faculty of the mind which forms and manipulates images, right? Concept, mental picture, right? Imagination, fancy. So you get the point. So let's go to John. Let's go to Revelation 1. And then we're going to go into the Old Testament and, you know, destroy this false doctrine that they're bringing out. Revelation 1 and 1, the revelation of Yahweh Shah, which Yahweh gave unto him. Now you got to know if the name is wrong, the image is wrong, that we have to cast, throw out those imaginations, those imageries, those false imaginations, man. So when we had that white image molded into our skulls, into our spirit, and then there's no image to counteract that image, right? Then you have a problem. Then that's why you have to have the correct image up so we can look into what we see as the correct image. Now, this is why we see this in Revelation 1, right? If you go to a, a funeral or a loved one and you see an image of a Chinese man up over your closed casket loved one, you're not just only going to throw that image aside because that's not who it represents. You're going to put the original image up to that person that's in that casket, now, that image is not that person exactly, but it is the imagination or the true image of that person in that casket. It's just, it's just that simple. And why don't you guys give up all your credit cards, right? Give them all up. Give up all them engraving images of those dollar bills, those $20 bills, those $100 bills, right? Why don't you throw out that uh, uh, gas and electric <clears throat> bill, that was printed and engraven, right? Why don't you get rid of your necklaces? Why don't you get rid of your shoes with those stitchings and those engraven images? You get the point. Give up all your money. That's all engraven images. You're not supposed to have it, right? Yeah. I guarantee you guys ain't going to do that. Anyway, it says, let me go into, uh, it says right here, verse 2, who bear record of the word of Yahweh and the testimony of Yahweh and of all things that he saw. That's the imagination. That's the rightful imagination. All things he saw. And we know the scriptures 1 and 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. And we got to understand that we did videos on that when it says like wool. The original texting was likened to wool. Okay. Um, so let's go to. Let's go on down here to Exodus 28. This is the ephod, right? It says, 
And they shall make the ephod of gold this is to the children of Israel of blue, right? And of purple, of scarlet, fine twined linen with the cunning work. It shall have two shoulder pieces, therefore joined at the edges thereof. And so it shall be joined together, right? And the curious girdle of, of the ephod, which is upon it, shall be of the same according to the work thereof, even of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. And thou shalt take two onyx stones and grave on them, right? Grave on them the names of the children of Israel, six of their names on one stone, right? It's saying to grave it. And the other six names of the rest, right? Of the other stones according to their birth with the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of signet. Thou shalt engrave two stones with the names of the children of Israel. So wait a minute. Let's go to uh, Exodus 20. It's being told that we had images, engravers, right? These were the things we did. Now, Let's go to Exodus 20 and 2. I am the Lord thy God that brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Wait a minute, but it just said make graven images, right? But let's see why. Of any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water underneath the earth. Why? Because back in Egypt, what did we do in these captivities? What did we do? We made graven images unto other gods. It'll show, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor to serve them. For I'm the Lord thy God and am jealous, a jealous power. So if you got a wife and your wife makes a quilt for you and get down on her knees to you and say, yes, this is for you, my Lord, to keep you warm and comfortable. Would you get upset? Or would you get upset if your wife made a quilt for the man down the street or the man next door and cooked him a pot of stew and took it to him and bowed down to him? See, we can see that you had altars unto the Lord and altars to Satan, the other gods. When you do things unto the Lord, that's righteous. When you don't do things unto the Lord, that's unrighteous. You had sacrifices unto the Lord. Then you had sacrifices to other gods. Which one was a righteous sacrifice? Which was unto the Lord according to the law? That's the difference. There was nothing wrong with engravings. There's nothing wrong with a picture of Yahawashah. Why would he be jealous of that? He, we're, we're reclaiming the image of his him and his son. Why would he be jealous of that? You guys don't make any sense. You know? You guys don't make any sense. You lost bunch of Negroes, man. Um, let's go to... Let's go to, I believe, Psalms 106. And um, let's see here, Psalms 106, one oh six in 18, and the fire, I'm just getting to the point, and the fire was kindled in their company, the flame burned up the wicked, they were, they made a calf of Oreb, right, and worshiped the molten image. Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. They forgot Yahweh, their savior, which had done great things in Egypt. That's to the point. It always goes back to bowing down the images, bowing down to other gods. This is what Exodus 20 
you know, sometimes you got to sink it in their heads. This is Exodus 24. It says, three, thou shalt not have any other God before me. No other gods with an S. This is what we were doing. There's nowhere, nowhere in history or the scriptures where we worship the heavenly father and made graven images unto the Lord, as we seen in here, that he punished us for that. It was because we did it unto other gods. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Now these guys were talking about, let's talk about Yahweh You mean to tell me the Lord is going to get mad because you're worshiping an image that looks like him? That doesn't make any sense. If you got a child, a wife, a family member who sees your image and they reference that image or worship that image, which worship goes to reference, they're not going to have a problem with that. You're not going to have a problem with that. But if there's an image of a white man sitting there and you're supposed to be looking like you if you're a so-called black man and they bow and praise down to that image, well, guess what? You're going to have a problem with that. Just that simple. It says, it says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, like the fish, worms, you know, anything else. It says, or that is in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, to them, nor serve them, them, those things you're talking about. Right? For I'm the Lord thy God and am jealous. Now, why would he be jealous for a picture of himself? This is not making any sense. You guys need to be taught, reevaluated, re educated, and taught all over again. That's all I have on that show. Defense laws.